Hey you guys, welcome, I'm Brandon, and I've been making tutorials and helping people get into game development for over three years now. So if you were interested in getting started with game development, then this is the video for you. Now I still remember how overwhelming it is just to figure out how to get started with game dev, so it's with that in mind that this video is going to serve as a complete roadmap for getting started with game dev in 2025. We're gonna skip past all the sweet nothings like practice, practice, practice. I just wanna give you concrete, actionable information to help you get started with game dev today. So I know that every single one of you has a different learning style, but with game dev, the fastest way you're gonna learn is with a hands-on approach. And that means getting yourself a game engine and diving right into it. And I do just wanna say, if you don't know how to program, I would not recommend making your own engine. All that's really gonna do is take time away from learning how to make games. The fastest way to get going is to just pick an engine that's already been created and it's already battle tested. And there's really only the big three that you need to consider, Unreal, Unity, and Godot. So I think what you're gonna to need to know to make an informed decision about which engine to pick is what are the graphical capabilities of each engine, what is the pricing like, and what are your programming options that are available to you. And we're gonna start with graphics because it is a controversial one. I've seen all sorts of Unreal versus Unity graphics videos on YouTube. But if I'm being honest, the graphical capabilities of all three of these engines, it does not matter to you at all. And that's just because solo developers are very rarely creating games that are pushing the boundaries of modern graphics cards. Leave that to the AAA studios. Godot, Unreal, or Unity, they will service your graphical needs just fine. They can all produce beautiful, high fidelity games. However, I do want to give credit where credit is due. Unreal is generally considered the king of graphics. They are the ones usually pushing the boundaries on this front. However, on the flip side, when we're talking about high fidelity games, we're usually talking about 3D rendering. If you are wanting to create 2D games, you can do this in Unreal, by the way, it's completely capable of doing that, but it does not have the suite of 2D options that you will get with Unity and Godot. Now let's talk about pricing because there have been a lot of changes around this in the last two years and it has been the source of a lot of drama in the game dev scene. And I wanna start with Godot actually just because it's the easiest. Godot is completely free and open source. Full stop. You make a game in the Godot engine, you will never owe Godot a cent. Don't stop here though, because just because Godot is completely free doesn't automatically mean that it should be your pick. I'm saying that because chances are, if you are watching this and you get into game dev and you choose either Unity or Unreal, chances are you will never owe them a cent either. So for several months in 2023, the internet completely set on fire because of a fee that Unity tried to introduce. It was a fee for developers for each install of their game up to 2.5% of their gross revenue. They called it the runtime fee and there were all sorts of questions and panic that came up because of this and it was not communicated or handled very well and it was a whole thing. But if you fast forward to today, the CEO who introduced that pricing model has stepped down. That model was scrapped and they just slightly increased the price on their pro plan. So here's how it works today. Downloading the engine is free. Getting a personal license is free. But if you've made over $200,000 in gross revenue in the last 12 months, then you will have to upgrade to a pro plan, which costs $2,200 a year. And for Unreal, they actually also introduced a change in 2024, but it's fairly similar to Unity. Unreal is also free to download and chances are you will never owe them a cent either. So you will owe a 5% royalty on games made in Unreal after lifetime sales of $1 million. And to be clear, you only owe royalties after the million dollars. You don't hit a million dollars in sales and suddenly owe them 50 grand. It's a pretty fair and generous plan. But as of January 1st, 2025, Epic started their Launch Everywhere with Epic program, which actually reduces the royalty rate from 5% to 3.5%, so long as you meet their qualifications. And if I'm reading this right, all you have to do is either ship your Unreal made game in the Epic Game Store exclusively or at the same time as other stores, which I assume also includes Steam. So again, Godot free, Unity free until you make $200,000 in the last 12 months and then you have to pay $2,200 a year for their pro plan. Unreal, it's free until you hit $1 million in sales and then you owe either 5% or if you meet their launch everywhere with Epic requirements, then you only owe 
5%. Okay, now let's talk about your programming choices based on which engine you choose. Unreal uses Blueprints, which is a visual scripting solution where you're kind of connecting nodes together to form the programming logic. You can also write C++ code in Unreal, nothing is stopping you from doing that. But the majority of the learning resources you're gonna be following will use Blueprints, so chances are that's what you'll end up using. With Unity, you'll either be writing C Sharp code, or they also have a visual solution similar to Blueprints called Unity Visual Scripting. But in this case, this is kind of backwards from Unreal because the visual scripting is newer, which means most of the resources you will find online write C Sharp code. So again, that's most likely what you'll be using. That is what I do. I write C Sharp code and I absolutely love that programming language. Now, Godot no longer has any support for visual scripting. However, they support their own programming language called GD Script. You can also write in C Sharp, C or C++. But again, with Godot, most of the resources you find will be using GD Script, so that's probably what you'll end up using. Okay, so that is the engine. Once you have an engine, where the heck do we go from here? So your first job is going to be learning the engine that you chose. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to go online and find some beginner level tutorials. Just follow along, do what they do on their screen. If you do that a handful of times, you are not going to be a master programmer or anything like that, but you will become very familiar with your engine. And once you've gotten to know your engine a little bit, you know your way around, you've done a few tutorials, the fastest way to progress from this point is to challenge yourself and give yourself an assignment that is 100% outside your scope of abilities. And I wanna be clear, I'm not saying go out and build an MMORPG or anything like that. At this point, just build a clone of a tiny, tiny game. And we're cloning a game just for the sake of efficiency. We don't have to think up the ideas. We don't need to come up with the game design, nothing like that. You just have to recreate it. That's it. And I always like to use Flappy Bird as an example here. You can break that entire game down into 12 to 15 Googleable chunks. What I mean by that is they are small enough that they are not going to overwhelm you, but you will also be able to find an answer online. So what this means is we are not going to follow a Flappy Bird tutorial. Instead, we're going to break down how the game works piece by piece on paper. We work through each one individually and then we just Google what we don't know how to do. So first we get the bird showing up on the screen. Get him animating. Apply gravity so he falls. Apply a force that's stronger than gravity when you click your mouse down so he actually moves up. And just keep going in small little steps like that. I promise you this is really all game development is most of the time. Have a really complex idea break it down into small manageable pieces and implement them one at a time in an order that makes reasonable sense. This is my notebook here, and this is all I do. I write down a whole bunch of line items and just work through them one after the other. This whole page right here was just to add two new items into my game, Cropolution. By the way, if you want to help support the channel, go ahead and wishlist or pick up that game on Steam today. But that's all it is. We break it down into small tasks and do them one at a time. So by doing this, cloning tiny, tiny games and doing it a couple of times, you will very quickly start to master your game engine and your programming language. Now, I know all of this can sound a bit overwhelming, and that's why I want to share some that I think will really help you. I've partnered with Zero to Mastery because they offer exactly what we're talking about. A complete roadmap to a career in game development starting from the very beginning, even if you've never touched a line of code before. If you're not sure where to start, you can take their career path quiz to guide you. But if you're watching this video, then chances are the become a game dev path is exactly what you're looking for. This path starts with an in-depth Unity course where you're gonna be building a full 3D RPG game, complete with combat systems, quests, dialogue, rewards, and cinematics. Once you've mastered how to make games with Unity, then they will teach you how to get hired, from acing interviews to making a really standout resume. They'll even assign you practical homework like applying to five jobs that you are actually excited about, and you'll build an AI application using OpenAI's API. One of the first things they're going to have you do is join their Discord server to find yourself an accountability partner. This is to keep you on track with your goals. They have over 400,000 members, so you will be able to find someone. They also have teachers and TAs in the Discord server who can help answer any question. I struggled a lot to learn game development. It was painful. And if I was starting over, this is the roadmap that I wish I had. It's comprehensive, it's thoughtfully designed, and it offers really good value for the price. And as a bonus, if you use the coupon code FRIENDS10, you'll get an additional 10% off. So if you are serious in pursuing a career in game development, then this is the perfect place to start. The link is in the description, so check it out after this video. Now, the rest of the skills that you are eventually going to need, 
2D art or 3D modeling, particles, shaders, music, sound design, game design, animation. These are all super important things, but they are a later learning step. With your game engine and your programming language, with just those things, you can make a video game, even if it's just with squares or cubes. But I do wanna leave you with as much useful information as possible and Arguably, art is the next most important thing that you need to be considering. So for 2D, Photoshop is the standard. I think I pay 13 US dollars a month for it. But if you don't wanna pay that, you can pick up Krita, which is completely free and open source. It is also very capable. For 3D modeling, just forget the paid options. They are too expensive for individuals who are just learning game development. Just download and use Blender. It is insanely good, it's free, and it's gotten much more intuitive for people to learn, which was really the only complaint I've ever heard about it in the past. Now in the description below, I'm going to post a whole bunch of useful links for commercially available art and sound effects, as well as software. These are gonna be very helpful to you if you are just getting started in game dev, so make sure you check out the description. But there are two very quick last pieces of advice that I wanna give you guys. Asset stores, Unity and Unreal have them, I'm actually not sure on Godot. I think they are working on it. If you use Godot, let me know in the comments if you guys have an asset store. But Unity and Unreal have massive asset stores where you can buy art, music, sound effects, particles, shaders, even entire games, just so that you can see how they are put together by a professional. Most of them are relatively inexpensive and I own over a hundred assets myself now. So whether you use Unity or Unreal, I very much encourage you to utilize asset stores. They can save you massive amounts of time and if there are things that you're not really great at, like making particle systems, you can just pick some up that are completely professional looking, it's great. The last thing I wanna say is game jams. I cannot overstate this enough, find them and participate in them. They are all over the internet and nothing will teach you faster than creating an entire game from start to finish in a time crunch. You'll meet other people in the industry, you'll get feedback on your game which is super invaluable. Game jams are one of your most valuable learning assets. That and just play good games. You can't make games that you enjoy if you don't play games that you enjoy. So play them, see if you can figure out what makes them fun, what makes them tick, what makes them special. You'll actually pick up a lot on game design just from playing good quality games. And that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed. 